My name is Brian Schmidt, Senior Application Engineer with Bosch Rexroth. In today's demonstration, I'm going to show you our new ControlX automation platform, which breaks the mold of typical machine controls and allows you to expand functionality by adding apps, much like a smartphone. Here we have two members of our ControlX drive family, a 70 kilowatt peak converter drive and a dual axis inverter drive, which is powered by the converter using built-in DC bus connectors along the top. Many additional drives can be stacked on this way with no additional wiring or accessories needed to distribute the power. For applications involving many axes, this concept of having a common power supply feeding a bank of inverter drives saves cabinet space, reduces the wiring effort, and is generally more cost effective than using converter drives exclusively. This dual axis drive is only two inches wide. So for example, you could have 30 axis of drives taking up only 30 inches of panel space widthwise. The ControlX drive family can handle a wide range of applications with drives ranging from half a kilowatt to 110 kilowatt continuous power and up to 210 kilowatts of peak power. ControlX Core is the control system of ControlX automation. It's available as a standalone device, or integrated into an industrial PC, or integrated into a ControlX drive. For our demo today, I'll be utilizing the drive-based version, and that's another way you can save space with ControlX automation. But the look and feel and programming is exactly the same regardless of the hardware platform. The software for ControlX automation is called ControlX Works. Much of ControlX works is encompassed by web-based engineering, so you don't necessarily need to install any software on a PC. You can connect with a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, any device with a web browser. I have the dashboard open on this iPad, but now I'm going to transition to my laptop and share the screen to demonstrate the software. This is the main dashboard of the web browser interface for ControlX works. Let's go to the apps area where we can see which apps are installed on the system. And this concept of customizing the control by installing apps is fundamental to ControlX automation. And that's why we call it the smartphone of automation. And the idea here is that if you need a motion control, you can install a motion app. If you need a PLC, you can install a PLC app. There's also apps for different programming environments like Node-RED, and Python, and apps for IoT and data analytics, which we currently offer on separate control platforms, will soon be available as apps you can load on ControlX Core. So it's very flexible in terms of adding the functionality that you need and making it more than just a machine control. To add or update apps, you could go to the online store, and this would be just like the online store or the app store on your phone where you could browse and install additional apps. This will be rolled out in the next couple of months. Or you can go to local storage, which is essentially the offline store, and click the plus icon. And you can install apps by browsing for them on your PC. And all the functionality that's needed for the app is built into a single file. So it's very modular in nature. Now let's take a look at the Motion app. So I'm going to go to Axis Configuration. And this is where we can add axes to our system. You can see I already have an axis X, Y, and Z. If I wanted to add an additional axis, I could click the Stop icon to go into Configuration Mode. Hit the Plus button. It's going to call it Axis 4. That's fine. Click the play button to go back to running mode. And then we can go to axis commissioning. And we can start jogging our axes. And so this gives us a nice tool in the web interface to be able to test out motion and test out the mechanics without the need to have any uh, code running. We have similar functionality for kinematics for robotics. So with kinematic configuration, I've added 
a robot. It's a Cartesian robot. And I've assigned the X, Y, and Z axes to the robot for the three dimensions of the Cartesian system. And similar for the individual axes, we have a kinematic commissioning tool, which allows us to jog the robot or send it to predefined target positions. So today we are demonstrating a Cartesian robot, and the features of robotics include point-to-point -point positioning, linear and circular interpolation. Uh, we can do blending, so you can round the corners and um, more efficiently move around objects. We can define areas in which the robot is permitted to move or not allowed to move. And we can also synchronize the robot to objects moving on a conveyor. Uh, so there's many built-in features that you don't have to program from scratch. And many of these features have been uh, well proven on previous uh, Bosch Rex Roth controllers. So now I'm going to run the robot from a PLC program that's running in the PLC app. And it's going to send a sequence of positions to the robot to execute. So first I'm going to enable the drives. That's going to put torque on the motors. Then we're going to group the axes. That puts them into coordinated motion mode. So now they're acting as a system. Then we're going to enable the robot so it's ready to receive motion commands. And finally I'm going to turn on this execute sequence bit. So now the robot is executing the motion. Now let's look back at the demo and we can see the motor spinning as the robot executes the moves. The motor on the left represents the x-axis and then y is the top right and z is the bottom right. But it's kind of hard to visualize what the robot is doing just by watching motor spin. Fortunately we have an app that's going to help us with that. And it's this app right here, this 3D demo app. This shows a three-axis system using linear modules, and the animation is linked to the position of each axis, so you can see what the robot is doing. This is performing a pick-and-place type of operation, picking objects from a conveyor and placing it in an imaginary container. And when it gets to these two rings, you're going to see an example of blending as it navigates around the wall. Now I've stopped the robot. It's no longer being commanded by the PLC. But I can actually command it to move right from the app by clicking on objects in the legend. So this app not only animates the robot motion, but also sends robot target positions to the Motion app, independent of the PLC. We can program in many different ways with ControlX Automation, and here is an app that highlights this. It's called Tiger for short, which stands for Target Independent Graphical Experience Framework. And it features three languages in one app, Python, JavaScript, and Blocks. Blocks is a visual form of JavaScript from Google and it's used to teach coding to kids in elementary school. If we look under motion, there's blocks to send an axis to a target position or send a robot to a target position or wait until an axis is moving, for example, or, or wait until an axis is done moving. Under loops, we have loops for running a chunk of code forever or running it X number of times. Under logic, we have if-then conditions or comparisons between two values. So it's fairly intuitive what the function of these blocks is. And if we make a change in the blocks, those changes are automatically updated in Python and JavaScript and vice versa. So for example, if I change this commanded position of 402 to 401 and then we go over to Python we can see the change is reflected here now if I copy this line of code paste it 
paste it here. We'll change the position as well. And we'll go back to blocks. We can see that a new block was added based on that line of code. And this allows the more visual programmer or novice programmer to program in an environment that he or she is comfortable with, while the more advanced programmer can work on the same application in Python, for example. This program is going to execute an abbreviated sequence of robot moves. It's going to execute four moves and repeat the sequence twice. And I'll click the play button to execute the code. So now the robot is moving again. And we can go back to our 3D demo app to see what it's doing. So this app highlights the diverse programming environment of Control X Core by providing three, three languages in one app and doing it all from a web browser with no software on a PC. Besides supporting a variety of programming languages, Control X Automation features apps to make your machine smarter. One such feature that is particularly relevant for robots is vibration dampening. As a robot arm comes to a stop, we sometimes see vibrations at the end effector, depending on the load, the stiffness of the arm, and the aggressiveness of the move. Vibration compromises cycle times by requiring a slower move profile or the need to pause while the vibration settles. One way we can mitigate this issue is with a vibration avoidance filter, which modifies the position command in such a way to avoid exciting the vibration frequency, as seen here. The other method is active vibration dampening, whereby the drive commands offsets to cancel out the vibration based on accelerometer feedback. This video is showing active vibration dampening on a two-axis delta robot. With no compensation, you can observe significant vibration induced by each move. But with vibration dampening turned on, the vibration is significantly reduced, and the benefit to the process is clear. Obviously, this demonstration is designed to exaggerate the before and after effect, but vibration is a very real issue that OEMs have to contend with, and these tools can provide a control-based solution to address a mechanical problem and increase productivity. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit controlx-automation.com. That's ctrlx-automation.com.